the Tape Project episode is going to be about journaling with micro cassette tape. Well, hey, welcome everybody back to the Tape Project. How to use micro cassette tape to create an ongoing journal, what to do with those tapes, how to archive them, etc., etc. One of the great benefits and prime uses of micro cassette recorders is having them with you all the time. They're compact, they're really small, the tapes are small. Yeah, you can keep them with you all the time. And one of the things I've been doing lately is I found myself using a micro cassette player as a journal recording device. I wouldn't call it a formal journal, like in the sense of a diary or every day or whatever. No, I just have this with me primarily in my car here. And oftentimes when I'm driving around, and you're kind of automatically driving but your mind can be thinking about other things and sometimes these interesting thoughts jump in my head and I don't have I can't stop and write them down having the convenience of a micro cassette recorder is wonderful for that purpose so one of the things that I would clue you guys in on is if you have multiple micro cassette recorders and you want to keep one of these in your car so you can uh, you know always have it handy don't use your best machine but you want to use a machine that's rugged and works well so i have an olympus uh, pearl quarter l200 it's it's like one of the smallest micro cassette machines ever made it's metal bodied it's probably a little more fragile and certainly a lot more expensive than this realistic micro 10. And lately I have been more apt to take this with me than the more expensive olympus but this works pretty good, and it's adequate for using the onboard microphone for voice recording, which is the purpose of, of course, a journal tape recorder entry. So you want to have your micro cassette recorder handy when you're driving. And I find for myself that it works really good to have it down like in the cubby hole next to your console here where you can just grab it and pick it up and it works great. You can, you're there, the record button's right on top, so you can just hold it up and start recording and set it back down when you're done. So one of the problems that you might find is when you want to play back your micro cassette recordings, you might not find it easy to locate individual recordings, individual clips. And what I like to do is I like to separate my recordings with about a five second blank spot so that when you go into the review mode, which is playback and then the review button, you hear that little gap right in there. That gap was the gap I put in between two different clips. And so it makes it easy to find the clips uh, that way. Now, some of the fancier micro cassette recorders like the Olympus Pearl Quarters have a cue mark system where you can put a cue on anywhere on the tape and that's handy. But a lot of recorders don't have that and some recorders a lot of the lesser expensive ones don't even have a tape counter so this one of course has a tape counter but I found the tape counters aren't always exactly correct if you zero the counter at the beginning of the tape and you go all the way to the end and you rewind it you'll find it's not back to zero so I find it best just to put a blank spot between recordings and then just count how many recordings you've done and then you could figure out oh I need to go back two recordings and play back that particular piece so a lot of people uh, are uncomfortable with the idea of maybe talking into a tape recorder. Maybe you're more comfortable with writing in a journal or diary. But I find there's a certain benefit to being able to speak things out loud. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe there is power in the spoken word or maybe it goes back into the primordial human history where we had uh, oral tradition only before the advent of written language. But whatever it is, there's something powerful about spoken word and speaking your words out loud. Sift your thoughts, play back your tapes, listen to them, listen to your voice, learn to recognize your voice, learn to tailor, to modify your voice, to have a speaking voice, and listen to those ideas that you record. And not just the words, but listen to your inflection the tone of voice, that underlying emotion, because that reveals a lot about your inner thoughts of what actually was transcribing through your ears when you first had the idea. One of the other things I really enjoy about micro cassette based 
journaling is you can hear the difference in the tone of voice based on whether it's early in the morning or late in the evening or middle of the afternoon, at least with me. When I first get up in the morning, I have a different kind of a voice, maybe more of a husky, nasally voice from having been asleep. And when you start uh, recording your thoughts under that kind of a voice, you're recording not just the words, but you're recording the whole tonality of your voice as you are just when you wake up. And I think that's really cool, especially if you play it back a couple years later down the road and you can kind of experience that all over again, experience that early morning getting up with fresh thoughts in your mind and recording them. So I think it's really important to hear your voice, the, the audible component of it, not just the words that are the content of the recording. And I find for using a taped journal, you have to review the tapes. That's really important. There's no point in making these recordings if you're not going to listen to them. Well, I guess there is a certain aspect of just being able to voice what you're feeling and releasing that tension or whatever, but really I think the most benefits derive from when you can play back the tapes and hear those ideas, and I think that's one of the real benefits of this kind of tape journaling is it's a very immediate way to collect these random or these fleeting thoughts that float in our head that are so fleeting we may not be able to even write them down even if we could stop and even if we had a pad of paper and a pen and we had the ability to stop and write down maybe we can't express what we're feeling in words maybe we have to just talk and mutter even and just sort of express our emotions on tape. Maybe that's the only way we can, we can express these ideas, these fleeting ideas. I think the fleeting ideas that we come up with are really important because those are the germs, the uh, seeds of future creative thought. Yeah, so one of the benefits of the tape journal is being able to dictate pieces that you could later transcribe to text. And this is a real powerful thing. You know, uh, there was a day, an era back in the, sometime in the mid-20th century when businessmen did a lot of dictation. They collected their thoughts, organized them orally, and a secretary would transcribe them from shorthand into a typewritten letter or typewritten document. But I think it's real interesting trying that. Try to dictate your pieces and try to speak them as if they were going to be transcribed directly onto text. In other words, leave out the ums and the ahs and the mmm and, uh, and all those pauses that we usually interject as a matter of thinking. And so you kind of have to develop if you're using microcassette for this purpose, you kind of have to develop a speaker's voice. You kind of have to learn to to speak in a, such a manner that those words can be transcribed directly to, to text and it converts well. So there's various ways that you can use these microcassettes to create pieces that go from an oral media into a text media. And one of those is if you have a blog, for instance, uh, perhaps you can start doing blog articles that are originated as spoken word pieces and transcribe them onto your typewriter and have typecast blogs that originated as an oral piece and a spoken word piece. I think that's really cool. Or whatever you're doing with text, with words, try originating them as a spoken word piece. One of the things you can do to help practice this is take your favorite author, take your favorite book, and take a passage from it that you like and speak it, read it into your tape recorder, and learn to speak the words as they were written and make it sound like the text is coming alive in voice. And that's a really good exercise to develop that kind of speaker's voice. If you are going to be transcribing your spoken word pieces into text of some form, there's various ways to do it. The least technologically sophisticated is simply to put the machine in playback mode, ready at your side, at your, either your computer or your typewriter, or, and then start playing back one sentence at a time and then hit the pause button. When you have enough text in your mind that you can remember what it was and type it out and then release the pause button and get the next batch of words, pause it and then type those. So it's kind of a, a cyclic thing. It's a little 
slow that way, but it's always very accurate. And also, it gives you the ability at that time to do some revision. If you weren't exactly pleased with the way you said something, you can always revise it in this process. The other way to do this is you could try a voice-to-text kind of an application or program in your computer. Now, I'm using a Mac Mini at home. The Mac operating system does have a voice-to-text feature. It's called dictation, and there's two ways of doing it. If you enable the dictation standard, then you have to have an internet connection and the voice file goes to Apple and their AI translates and goes back to you. But keep in mind, if you do that, they're recording this stuff and they're gleaning information off what you're saying. So if you want more privacy, you have to select enhanced dictation through the system's preferences dictation tab. And when you select enhanced dictation and enable dictation, it will download the whole voice translation software into your computer and then you can use it offline. Now I tried this earlier with a first of all a microphone plugged right into my Mac and it was reasonably accurate but then I tried playing back some of this tape through a cable out on the earphone jack you have to adjust your volume level so that the uh, level indicator is within range but it was terribly inaccurate and I guess it's just the noise level of the micro cassette it's terribly inaccurate in translation so my best advice when you transcribe this to a written form is to do it by hand listen to the tape to the fleet are, so to speak. So I might be pause it and write those out and continue like that. Now you could try playing it back, like I recorded in the 2.4 centimeter per second mode. You could try playing back in the 1.2 centimeter mode, but it's so, it's so slow, it's not gonna work. It's way too slow. So it's best just to do it in batches. So you might have the question of how can I archive my taped journal entries? What's the best way to do that? Well, there's various ways to do it. You could archive them to digital, but in the matter of keeping with our theme in this series, which is keeping it analog, you have essentially two ways of going. You can either archive the tapes directly, the micro cassette tapes, save them, or you could try transcribing them onto, for instance, compact cassette or the bigger size cassette tape format. Now, I know my friend Mitch, I believe, does this, and some other tape recordists do this. They transcribe their micro cassette tapes onto compact cassette. First of all, there's no real advantage in terms of the capacity of the tape to do that because this here is a 90 minute micro cassette tape so it's not any shorter than a compact cassette of 90 minutes so it has the same capacity as a regular tape a compact cassette and when you do if you do copy this play it back out of the earphone jack and copy it to a regular tape recorder you're gonna lose one generation of quality and so it's actually better just to keep the tapes originally and archive them that way. Now one concern might be, well maybe micro cassette tapes aren't going to be as commonly available in the future as compact cassette tapes and maybe you don't want to use up all your micro cassette tapes in an archive journal. Well, I've been looking around online and I found that there are a number of sellers of various brands of micro cassette tapes on Amazon and we've already talked about a few of those. For instance, the Sony brands and one of the previous episodes I talked about the difference in quality between the made in Mexico Sony brands which are pretty good. The made in Thailand ones appear to be not so good. But there's also other brands like there's Maxell I notice has uh, quite a few available on uh, Amazon and I have another off brand that I've currently have ordered and I'm going to review those and they had a pretty good review on Amazon but there's also other sources of micro cassette tapes that you might not be aware of online for instance when I was ordering silk typewriter ribbons from the company ribbons unlimited I discovered on their website that they do sell micro cassette tapes. So you might want to find office supply, online office supply uh, companies. They might have micro cassettes. You just got to look and you might be surprised. So my advice, if you do want to archive these journal entries as, as audio recordings, is to keep them in the original tape, the micro cassette tape, and it makes it easier to store them. They don't take up as much room. The bigger concern, I think, in terms of long-term archiving is not the tape itself. I think it's really the machines. Going forward in the future, we'll probably always have cheap, inexpensive, compact cassette players 
that might output on MP3. You already see those commonly available on Amazon for digitizing your tapes. So those will always be available, but you probably won't always have micro cassette recorders available. So it's always good to have several machines in your collection and always keep one of those machines as your really top machine and take care of it and use it for playing back your archives. Now, if worse comes to worse, if you didn't have any micro cassette machines, like say 10 years from now, they're all broken and gone, what can you do? Well, I think what you could do, and I haven't done this myself, but you could take the tape out of the cassette and you could load it into a compact cassette tape. And so you could reload this tape into a bigger shell and to play it back on a compact cassette player. And that's one possibility also that if, if it came to extreme measures. Now, if you're recording, you know, onto a compact cassette, obviously the quality of the audio is going to be better than on micro cassette. But there are some things you can do to make the micro cassette recordings better. One of those things, one, probably one of, one of the most important things to do and the easiest thing to do is to use an external microphone on and plug it into your micro cassette recorder if it has one. And you should always try to get a micro cassette recorder with an external mic jack. It just improves the sound of the recording so much better because you don't have the motor noise in the plastic body of the machine in the background. Then, of course, listening to it, the little tinny speaker is usually inadequate and you don't need a full-size set of headphones. I use a set of earbuds and what I have is I simply have one of these adapters that goes from monaural on a three and a half millimeter jack to stereo on a, a female jack and then you can plug your stereo earbuds into it and listen to the monaural audio on both channels. And that's probably the most convenient way to listen to your micro cassette tapes in the field. You don't have to carry a bulky set of headphones. So a little set of earbuds with one of these mono to stereo adapters and get yourself a little external microphone and that's a really good way to get better quality sound on micro cassette. The other thing I might mention here is you might notice I'm using a 90 minute tape. This is a Radio Shack brand tape and I normally would advise not to use 90 minute tapes in micro cassette and the reason why is the plastic film that makes up the tape is a lot thinner and there's a greater chance that it's going to jam in the machine. Uh, normally I like 60 minute tapes, they're thicker, but I happen to be using this and I'm just experimenting with it so we'll see what happens. So I'll give you one purpose for what I've been journaling with uh, micro cassette, and that is I've been working on planning and organizing the upcoming Albuquerque typewriter get together coming up this November and I've decided to rename it the Albuquerque typewriter fiesta. So I got some artwork printed up. I created some artwork and I'm getting some flyers printed up. but. Uh, I've been using micro cassette as a way of collecting and organizing my thoughts in kind of this ongoing journal idea. So it's not just for like psychological conditioning or therapy or whatever, you know, how there is a certain benefit to just speaking things out. It's not just for that. It's really for, you can use it to organize and plan things, a very structured use for micro cassette audio. Regarding the idea for the tape letter, I think the way it'll work is one person records on one side of the tape and then nails the tape and the other person replies on the B side or opposite side. So that was some notes that I was making when I was eating pizza at New York Slice Parlor last week uh, with this machine and it was pertaining to how would I manage a taped letter correspondence with my tape geek friend Mitch and this was one idea that I documented here was to uh, record your letter on one side mail the tape and then the other the recipient records his response on the other side of the tape and then when you, he mails the same tape back and now you have a record of what you said to him and what he said back and then you go back and record back over your side again as your response so it kind of goes back and forth like that this kind of idea collection is what this tape journaling is ideal for. You're trying to brainstorm how to fix something, how to work something out, how to make something work, and sometimes the only way to do it is to talk it through. And that's what tape is great for, and that is what these micro cassettes are especially good for because they're so convenient to carry around.
Well, this is Joe Van Cleve giving you just ideas for how to use micro cassette tapes as an ongoing audio journal. Some of the applications for audio journaling, not only for just idea collection and brainstorming, but for oral collecting of material that will be converted into a text document to be published later. So kind of like dictation to text. Those are some of the ideas I'd like to throw out to you guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your experiences are with using tape uh, as a medium for writing, uh, going from oral to text. And uh, leave comments down below if you can. And until next time, stay creative and have yourselves a great day.